Are you seriously still gripping a steering wheel with your own two hands like some kind of pioneer churning butter? Today, I'll explain how self-driving cars see, think, and drive to you like you're five years old. And by the end of this, you'll be able to confidently nod along at dinner parties when someone mentions L-I-D-A-R instead of just staring blankly and hoping they change the subject to something that you understand. Like bread. First off, let's get one thing straight. A self-driving car is not magic. It's a robot, and like most robots, it's a little bit dumb and needs a lot of help to do its one job, which is not crashing into things. To do this, it has to do three things over and over and over again, super fast. It has to see, it has to think, and it has to drive. So, we're going to go through these one at a time. Please, try and keep up. Let's start off with seeing. I mean, you see with your two eyes, but a self-driving car is way more paranoid and needs a bunch of different kinds of eyes to feel safe. Its main set of eyes is called LIDAR, which sounds complicated, but it's not. LIDAR is like giving the car a super fast laser pointer and telling it to spin around in a circle. The car shoots out little invisible laser beams in all directions thousands of times per second, and when a laser beam hits something like another car, a person, or a particularly confident squirrel, it bounces back. The car's computer measures exactly how long it took for that little laser beam to come back. If it comes back really fast, the object is close. If it takes a little bit longer, then the object is obviously farther away. Now by doing this millions of times every second, the car builds a perfect 3D dot-to-dot -dot map of everything around it. It's like the car is constantly yelling in all directions and listening for the echo. This is how the car knows the exact shape, size, and distance of every single thing nearby. It's the car's way of feeling its way through the world without actually touching anything. So, when you hear LIDAR, just think of a spinning laser map. I mean, it's the car's superpower for not bumping into furniture. But LIDAR is a bit of a one-trick pony. Sure, it's great at seeing shapes and distances, but it's terrible at reading. I mean, it can't tell a stop sign from a pizza place sign. And that is where the car's second set of eyes come in. Regular cameras. These are pretty much the same kind of cameras you have on your phone. They're positioned all around the car, looking forward, backward, and around all the sides. These cameras are the part of the system that can see in color, and they're in charge of reading road signs, seeing the painted lines on the roads, and figuring out if a traffic light is red, yellow, or green. So, you have LIDAR for seeing shapes, and cameras for seeing colors and words. LIDAR tells the car that there's a tall pole with a flat shape on top. The camera looks at it and says, Oh, that flat shape is red and has the letters STOP on it. We should probably stop. They work together as a team. One provides the 3D map, and the other provides the context. It's like the one friend who can only see in black and white but has perfect depth perception, and another friend who's a little blurry but can see all the colors of the rainbow. Together, they can navigate a room pretty well. Now, what happens if it's foggy or raining really hard, or you're just driving through a dust storm? Well, your eyes already aren't working so well, and the car's cameras have the same problem. LIDAR also gets a little confused by tiny things in the air like raindrops, so the car needs another superpower for bad weather. And this is where its third set of eyes come in. Radar. Now, radar is an old-school tool that works like a game of Marco Polo. The car sends out a radio wave, which is like yelling Marco, and then that travels out, hits something big like another car, and the audio bounces back. The car hears the returning Polo, and knows that something's out there, how far away it is, and how fast it's moving. Now, radar isn't nearly as detailed as LIDAR. I mean, it can't create a beautiful 3D map. It just tells you big, important stuff like, there's a giant metal box ahead of you and it's getting closer. But its greatest strength is that it doesn't care about weather. I mean, rain, fog, snow, it doesn't matter. The radio waves go right through all of it. So, LIDAR makes the map pretty, cameras read the signs, and radar is the grumpy old guard who can see through anything. The car uses all three to get a complete understanding of the world around it. It's basically cheating. So, that's the seeing part. The car has its laser maps, its color vision, and the bad weather vision. It's constantly collecting a ridiculous amount of information about everything around it. But seeing is useless if you don't know what to do with the information. And that brings us to the second step. Think. The car's brain is a very powerful computer tucked away somewhere inside the car. This computer is the grown-up in charge. It takes all the data from the LIDAR, the cameras, and the radar and just puts it all together into one big cohesive picture of the world. It combines the 3D laser map, the color information from the cameras, and the motion detection from the radar to build a single live-action video game of its surroundings. The car is the main character in this video game, and its only goal is to get to the next level without a game over sign. 
Now, once the brain has the complete worldview, it has to decide what to do. And this is where the thinking really happens. The car's brain isn't smart like a person. It doesn't have ideas or get hunches. It has a giant, enormous, ridiculously long rulebook that human programmers have written for it. And the rulebook is basically a series of if this, then that commands. For example, if the traffic light is red, then apply the brakes. If the car in front of you slows down, then you slow down too. If the GPS says our turn is coming up, then activate the turn signal and move into the turning lane. If an object that looks like a person suddenly walks in front of the car, then slam on the brakes immediately. The computer checks this rulebook millions of times per second. It looks at the world it sees, finds the current situation in its rulebook, and then finds the corresponding action. It's not genius, it's just incredibly fast obedience. The real challenge though for the programmers is to think of every possible situation that a car could ever face and write a rule for it. What if a deer jumps onto the highway? What if a plastic bag blows across the road? What if another driver is doing something completely unpredictable? Well, the car's brain has to have a plan for all of it. And this is why self-driving cars have to drive millions of practice miles. I mean, they're constantly finding new situations to add to the rulebook. So, the car has seen the world with its many eyes, and its computer brain has looked at its rulebook to figure out what to do. Now comes the final, most important part. Drive. Thinking about stopping is not the same as actually stopping, and the car's brain needs a way to control the car's body, and it does this by using things called actuators. That's pretty much a fancy word for the car's muscles. Actuators are like little motors and electrical systems that are connected to the car's main controls. The steering wheel, the accelerator pedal, and the brake pedal. When the car's brain decides to do something, it sends an electrical signal to the correct actuator. If the brain's rulebook says, turn the wheel slightly to the left to stay in the lane, it sends a signal to the steering actuator, which is a motor that physically turns the steering wheel. If the brain decides, we need to slow down, it sends a signal to the brake actuator, which physically pushes the brake pedal. It's like a remote control for the car's own feet. The brain says go, and the actuator pushes the gas. The brain says stop, and the actuator pushes the brake. The brain says turn, and an actuator turns the wheel. And these are the car's hands and feet doing exactly what the brain tells them to do, instantly and without question. This whole cycle, from seeing to thinking to driving, happens continuously. I mean, the car sees the world, thinks about the rules, and then moves its robot feet. And it does this over and over again, dozens of times every second, just to make driving look smooth and natural. See, think, drive. See, think, drive. It's a pretty simple loop, just performed at lightning speed by a very focused robot. So, to recap the whole thing for you. The car has three kinds of eyes. It has laser eyes called LIDAR to make a 3D map, it has camera eyes to read signs and see colors, and it has radar eyes to see through bad weather. That's how it sees. Then, it takes all that information and gives it to its big computer brain. The brain isn't creative, it just follows a giant rulebook that tells it exactly what to do in every situation. That is how it thinks. And finally, the brain sends commands to its robot hands and feet, called actuators, which control the steering, brakes, and gas. And that is how it drives. Congratulations, you did it! You now understand how a multi-billion dollar piece of futuristic technology works. It's just a paranoid car with laser beams, a big rule book, and some robot feet. And now, you can go explain it to someone else and look incredibly smart. I mean, you're basically an engineer now. Go on, update that resume.